God's prospective plan for all his children. I wish above all things God says that you may prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. God wants you to be rich before God wants you to be healthy. In other words, in God's topmost list of priority, your having money is more important to God than your being in health. I don't rush this. God's quest, eagerness, and priority for you to have money by far supersedes, overrides, and exceeds his eagerness for you to be healthy. You can be healthy and die a pauper. But if you are rich, you can buy yourself health. I put it permissively. In Luke 16, Lazarus was very, very, very righteous. He was poor. He was sick. He died pretty soon. The rich man didn't know God. He went to hell. He made it for hell. He made, he made it to hell. But listen, he in a healthy life here on earth lived well. He sumptuously. He lived well. Lived longer than the man. He died much better than the righteous man. There are many unbelievers who are 80 years strong and healthy. 90 years, strong and healthy. But so many righteous people died 30, 40, 30, 45, 50, died long ago. You know why? Because of lack. Nothing destroys God's children like poverty. So God's eagerness is for you to prosper. God wants you to prosper. I wish I can drum this into your ears. Say with me, God wants me to prosper. Believe it with me. God wants me to prosper. God wants you to have money. God wants you to be healthy. God wants you to be free from problems. God wants you to be free from pressures. God wants you to enjoy the best. If you can believe me, I mean you have received much help. I'm going to show you how you can live all of your days in prosperity. That is my, my, my assignment for today. But know that God's will is that you live in affluence. In Isaiah 61 and verse 6, God says, You, my child, shall eat the riches of the Gentiles. The Gentiles represents the unbelievers. The Jews or Israel represents the church, God's children. God said to the people of God, You shall eat the riches of the Gentiles. Isaiah 61 and verse 6. God says, I wish above all things that you may prosper. Third John chapter 1 and verse 2. God says, you shall lay up gold as dust. Job 22 and 24. The God of Ophir as the stones of the water brooks. God wants you to lay up gold as dust. You can't count dust. You can't count the sand. God says, my program for you is going to be so rich that when you bring your gold and people want to number them, they will not successfully be able to number your wealth. They can't number the gold you have acquired. God wants you to lay up gold as dust. Job 22 and verse 24. The Lord says he will make you plenteous in goods. He wants to make you plenteous in possession. You have landed properties everywhere, houses, estates everywhere, cars, vehicles. You, just, you are just super rich and super wealthy. That is God's way for you. Chapter 28 of Deuteronomy verse 11. God says he gave the people of God surplus, wealth, silver, gold, apparel, more than they could carry. It was when Jehoshaphat went to fight war. God said, don't fight. I'm going to fight for you. God fought. The enemies destroyed themselves. They only went to gather the spoils. And the Bible says they gathered the spoils and it was more than they could carry. You have a bank account. They said uh, the threshold of a bank account is that you can have more than 30 trillion and you have 500 trillion. They said, well, can we take that here? Look for other banks to store. <laughs> more than they could carry. My prayer is that God will give you wealth. I mean, wealth that smells. Wealth 
There are people who now say this is wealth. May that be your story in Jesus' mighty name. It is God that gives you power to get wealth. So you need to understand that there is what qualifies you for God to give you power to get wealth. What is it? Trust. Come on, trust. God must trust you to give you power to get wealth. If you are faithful in the least, God says you are faithful in the much. Luke 16 verse 10. Now your faithfulness in using what God has given you is your trust. You show you put your trust in God. If God can find you faithful in the use of the least, God will give you the much. God will bring the much. You have used 100,000 well. You have not hoarded anything, kept anything away from God. God says, I'm going to give you 1 million. He gives you 1 million. You are faithful. He gives you 1 billion. He said, you are faithful. Give you 10 billion. Until God can find you faithful, God is not going to entrust you with wealth or power to get wealth. Power to get wealth is a key. He gives us power to get wealth. Chapter 8 of Deuteronomy 18. He says, your barns shall be filled with plenty, and your vats shall overflow with oil. Proverbs 3, 5, 6, 9, 10. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart, and refuse to lean to your own understanding. In all of your ways, acknowledge him, and God shall direct your paths. Shake it, your steps. He said, honor the Lord with all thy substance, with thy substance, and with the first fruit of thine increase. So, shall thy vines be filled with plenty, and thy vats shall overflow with fatness, with plenty. Honor the Lord. When you honor the Lord, so shall thy vines be filled with plenty. Say, give, and it shall be given back unto you good measure. Press down, shaking together, and running over. Shall men be compared by God to give into your bosom. God wants you to have abundance. Wealth is the gift of God. Ecclesiastes 5.19 Wealth is the gift of God. So Abraham was very rich in silver and in gold. Genesis 13 verse 2 Abraham was blessed in all things. 24, chapter 24 Genesis verse 1 He was blessed in all things. He was rich in cattle, in men servants, in herds, in flocks, in female servants, in silver, in gold, in everything, Abraham was blessed. The will of God is for you to have abundance. God wants you to have abundance. And the fastest way God wants to give you this abundance is by giving you all he has in store for you. What qualifies you? Your absolute confidence and faith in him. One. Two, your obedience to the covenant of giving. You must give willingly, sacrificially, bountifully in order to advance the cause of the kingdom. Thirdly, you must be willing to do good to all, especially those who are the household of faith. Give to ministers that you hear them preaching in sound words like this. Give to us. I'm not here to play. He sent me as his ambassador. Whatever you give me is what you give him. If you commit yourself to what we are doing here, listen, the Lord God Almighty that I represent in Jesus' mission headquarters, Christ's ambassador's living mission international, he will amaze you with supplies. It's valid. He will amaze you. So what am I saying? Time has come when you should look beyond yourself. Forget about yourself. I mean it. He that sows to his flesh shall reap corruption from the flesh. But if you sow to the spirit by investing into the kingdom of business, by casting your bread upon the waters in this life, you are going to see a hundred for the time come, come back to you. God wants to give you the fastest financial increases of hundredfold returning back to you. He can't do that until he can trust you because you can trust him by giving to him. If you invest your goods into his kingdom, God will announce you. God will give you what? I want to stop here. I want you to know a place here, me, that the will of God is for to prosper and be held, even as your soul prospers. God will give you the fastest increases financially that, 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 that you've ever seen, that you've never seen short, more than you've ever seen. All he wants you to do is to trust him, to put him first, to abandon yourself before him, and God will amaze you. My prayer for you is that you will never doubt God. So you are seen in the morning. In the evening, don't be told. Give a portion to seven. From eight, don't be told. I tell you, when the cloud is full, it will fall. When you fill your cloud, it will fall. When your heavens are filled with rain, with abundance, it will pour on you. Nobody will take your, bl your blankets. If you give and I don't give, you are going to get harvest. I won't get anything. I'll be begging you. Listen, your giving does not help me, does not help God, does not help the church. It helps you. The farm that receives your seed 
does not become better. You give the sand, the soil an assignment when you sow your seed because some, the soil must give you back returns. So when you give, you are not helping the soil. When you give, you're not helping God. When you give, you're not helping the kingdom. When you give, you're not helping me. When you give, you're helping yourself. And I pray God will help you to see that so that I can give without being afraid of, I'm going to bless a pastor and I'm struggling. No, no. When you give, you are giving what you back, what you never expected or what you never believed can happen. And God bless you. In Jesus' name.